This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and this is the HTC Thunderbolt on Verizon. This is a their flagship phone. It runs Android OS 2.2 Froyo with HTC Sense software and that's not the, the big deal. What's a big deal is the 4.3 inch display that's quite quite colorful. It moderately bright, not super duper bright, and it has 4G LTE. That's the real deal 4G. It's considerably faster than WiMAX and generally speaking a bit better than even HSPA Plus on T-Mobile. As you can see here we've got the little 4G LTE indicator on and we've got about half bars showing which is actually a pretty decent signal. And we've been getting about 8 to 11 megs down according to Ookla's speedtest.net and upload speeds have been a little slow for us but we're still testing on that. Uh, normally we see upload speeds around 5 megs. So. In fact we've actually used this with the Wi-Fi hotspot feature and our ASUS eSlate, which is a Core i5 Windows tablet, and we've been seeing 11 megs down and about 5 to 6 megs up when using this as a Wi-Fi hotspot. Very cool. So it looks like your standard 4.3 inch HTC device, which isn't a bad thing. It's very elegant looking. Mostly plastics here. They don't want to interfere with reception too much, so we don't have a lot of metal here, except for the really cool flip stand. And this is nice. It's it's not a loose or wobbly at all. On the side we've got the very large volume controls. And up top we've got the power button and the 3.5 millimeter stereo jack. Micro USB over here. And your standard Android capacitive touch buttons on the bottom. Now we don't usually pay much attention to the box or unboxing, but this is a pretty neat looking box here. It's all black. You've got the raised HTC Thunderbolt on the side. You slide that off. Same thing again, and you've got that cool red and black thing going on. The phone goes in here, and inside it explains that you've got a SIM card inside, because LTE uses a SIM card, a little manual, and we've got the USB cable and the charger in here, but no headset. One thing Verizon did include is a 32 gig SD card pre-installed in the phone. That's the highest capacity you can currently get with a micro SD card, so we certainly like that. The phone itself has 8 gigs of internal storage, but only about 2.4 gigs are available for your use. It's got a 1 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon 2nd gen CPU. That's a single core CPU, and Quadrant gave it a 1574 on benchmark, which is a little bit slower than the Aspire 3G, Aspire 4G on AT&T, which is surprising as pretty much its counterpart on AT&T, but probably in the interest of power management, since this had been having some problems with power management, they did that. Speaking of the HTC Inspire 4G, here it is. Again, it's a 4.3 inch phone that's pretty much comparable. In fact, it lacks LTE, just as HSPA+. But otherwise, pretty close to identical. The Verizon one looks a little bit thicker, but that may have more to do with the colors than anything else. It is slightly thicker, though. This guy has an 8 megapixel camera on the back, autofocus lens, and a dual LED flash, and it takes quite nice pictures, and it can do 720p video. Up front, you've got a 1.3 megapixel camera for video chatting as well. There is no video chat application installed on the phone, at least on our phone, and we are here a couple of days before actual release, so something like Quick may become available quickly for video chatting. So here you can see you've got the HTC Sense software, the usual lovely flip clock with the embedded weather and their shortcuts to the phone settings and all applications and favorite people to call friend stream which we haven't set up yet for social networking we've got several pages to customize and wireless controls are right up here which is nice and you can also access those along with your recently used applications up here phone has Wi-Fi 802.11n as well as 4G and also can fall back to EVDO Rev A 3G and of course it has Bluetooth on it and a GPS. As we noticed with the Inspire though we had a little bit of trouble getting a fix indoors unless we turned Wi-Fi on. Kind of weird. Works fine outdoors, gave good directions, it worked well with Google Maps and with VZ Navigator which features the new X version that has 3D city data. The phone has excellent voice quality. It does use the Verizon network for the existing Verizon network for that, not LTE. We're not doing voice over LTE yet. And 
call quality is very loud and clear. In fact, quite loud. The speaker is also quite loud, too, without distorting. I was using this for Google Navigation in the car, and it was nearly frighteningly loud. VZ Navigator is a little bit more toned down when it comes to volume. The Thunderbolt is going to sell for $249 with a two-year contract, and LTE 4G Data Unlimited, or whatever unlimited means, is going to be $30 a month. If you want to use the Wi-Fi hotspot feature, that's an additional $20 a month, and it can support up to eight simultaneous connections. I'm not sure how much throughput you're going to get if you actually try to connect that many, but you can, in theory, do that if you want. Let's take a look at some of the software on here. It's bundled. We've got Adobe Reader, Bitbop, Blockbuster, which is appearing on pretty much every large screen Android phone these days, the camera application, City ID, DLNA, FM radio, HTC's flashlight app, which is pretty handy in the dark, especially with that dual LED flash, HTC's footprints, and Friendstream, and the usual collection of Google applications, Gmail, Gtalk, Gallery, Google Search. Yay, Google Search is there. We've got Kindle pre-installed, Let's Golf 2, Google Maps, Market, of course, mobile hotspot application, and we'll take a minute and show you what that looks like. It's just very simple. You just enter a name, set a password, and you're good to go, and tap the checkbox to turn it on, and uncheck it to turn it off, which you probably want to do when you're not using it to save power. Other apps include Quick Office for looking at MS Office files, Rhapsody, we've got Slacker as well, HEC's Neat Stock apps, Vcast apps, Shortcut, ToonWiki, Vcast Media, Video Player, Voice Recorder, Voice Search, VZ Navigator, HTC's Weather, and of course the YouTube Player. And you've also got EA's Rock Band here to play with. Since this runs Froyo, it has Flash 10.1, and guess soon it's going to be getting Flash 10.2 as well, so we're going to take a look at the web browser. Over Verizon's LTE 4G network here, this is not Wi-Fi. And we'll visit our own website. And you can see HTC's custom keyboard here, which I always enjoy. That's, that's pretty much Wi-Fi speeds there. That's very good. Again, if you're getting 10 megs down, that's typically what we see for our clients on our Wi-Fi network. So Scrolling is smooth. And we'll take a look at a video. And it's downloading a flash banner ad over there too without slowing down too much, which is a good sign. So now we'll take a look at our video review of the HTC Arrive. It's a YouTube video. Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the HTC Arrive on Sprint. This is a Windows 7 phone. In fact, it's Sprint's first Windows 7 phone because Microsoft recently added support for CDMA, which is That's pretty good. I was a little bit worried since it benchmarks a little bit slower than the. Uh, AT&T version of the phone that it might have a little trouble with flash, but this is very good. In fact, this, the Motorola Atrix 4G and the HTC Inspire 4G are the best right now for flash in a phone. The controls are fairly responsive too, which is something that we don't see in a lot of Android phones still that have flash. And now we're loading the New York Times full homepage. By default it goes to the mobile site, so we just chose the link to take us to the full site. And it looks like it's working on some flash content right there. And it's still working on there we go. Page is a little slow to scroll because there is so much flash on it, but at least it's there. Typically, the video quality that's served to mobile clients on the New York Times homepage is not super high. That's some sad news there. So 
That is Flash in the Android WebKit web browser. Take a look at the YouTube player here, even though this has full Flash. So you can see what it's like and hear the speaker. And again, this is over Verizon 4G. We'll test out Jennifer Aniston doing smart water. It goes viral. You can hear the incredibly loud and fairly clear speaker. And now we're watching the high quality version which we turn on in settings. Which looks pretty much like the default setting. And the sound is indeed coming out of the mesh grill underneath here. So when you've got it propped open it's going to be even louder because it won't be blocked by this. So is it a good multimedia device? I'd say so. Now the Thunderbolt, like the Evo, is a large phone. It's 4.3 inches and it's got some weight to it. So compared to the Motorola Atrix 4G here on the left, if with a 4 inch display, which itself is no tiny phone, you can see the size difference in terms of what you're going to stick in your pocket. Big question with this is battery life. That's supposed to be the reason why it had been delayed a couple of times. And I have to say, so far, you can see where our battery meter is at. I was at almost full putting it on the charger for quite a while before we did this, but I've been doing things like navigation and Wi-Fi use and downloading apps, and it's already about down to a third level, so mm, it's probably going to be a phone you want a spare battery for if you intend to use it heavily. Battery is user replaceable. If you take a look at the back, there's a little pry area here, and you know, HTC's phones are always a challenge to open. I will try not to rip off my fingernails. So here's your battery right here, and if you take that out, you get access to the micro SD card slot. And the SIM card slot, you can barely see, it's marked here as a SIM card, and it's a pull-out metal tray. That's where the SIM card goes for 4G data service. And this battery is 1400 milliamps, which is better than the, the HTC Inspire and some of the other slim HTC 4.3 inch devices that only had 1230 milliamps, but it's probably a little bit on the low side for something with 4G and such a big display and a 1 gigahertz CPU. And that cover just snaps right back on. Not nearly as difficult to deal with as the Inspire when it comes to getting the back off. So that's the HEC Thunderbolt available on Verizon Wireless for $249 with contract. This is their latest Android Superphone with 4G LTE, a 1 GHz single core Snapdragon CPU, 8 megapixel camera, and 4.3 inch capacitive multi touch display. Yeah, it's definitely a nice phone. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read the full review.